here's a here's a window and there's a few different boxes on here and they've got different colors inside and different borders on the outside frames on the other side right click over them change this frame change that color you'll be able to do all of that from here uh, as well as open up a, a supporting interface where it's like here's all the properties which actually leads me to a question so I, I don't know if your plan is in this properties window or whatever yeah. you're going to have so I assume I'm going to right click on an element or right click on that in the list or click a button on something associated with that list and it'll bring up a nice little dialogue saying here are the options click here fill in this and so forth now, yes absolutely these gadgets have got gajillions <laughs> of options right like the, the tags for some of these things just goes on I can tell you because uh, I just got done in updating all of them they're just slightly less than 1,000 okay so the question is are you gonna support all of them all of them all of them yes but let's say for the sake of argument that um, <coughs> I don't know something happens and you decide to take a break or something <laughs> can I go to the XML file and then add whatever tag I want that's new that may have been added by the gadget developer after the release of this. Yes. In other words, the, the runtime that you use, the, the what is it, the, the GUI, uh, like GUI bits or GUI bits. runtime, right, yeah. It, it literally, it really does just shovel these things into a call and it doesn't it, care what button. Yes and no. Um, would you be able to extend it dynamically on the XML? Yes. Okay. Uh, would it know what it is? No. Well, that's okay. I yeah. Think, but, 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 uh, okay. but as soon as you updated GUI bits, it would. You know, because literally, I have to define all of the strings and compare all the strings and match them to the numeric values. So now I've been thinking about a way to do exactly what you're talking about. And the only way that it would work is if you, instead of using the human readable version of tag and value, you used its actual numeric. In which case, I could leave it open to do that. So if you look it up in the header file and say, oh yeah, well this guy is tax you know, 5006, and I know what it is, because it's tagged, so both of them are long words. I mean, they're, they're just 32-bit values. Um, when it's a pointer to something, that's, that's something different. But it's like, oh, I want to change the, some new thing was added. Now that you, now you can change a, a set of a pen color, pick a pen for drawing a particular part of the gadget. Didn't exist before, but it exists now. You could add it to the XML in the proper, this is a tag property for it, in its literal numeric value, probably you'll probably set it up as like hex. Right. So you know it's zero x, da da da, and whatever. And yes, I could make the interpreter just. I'm going to trust you. You know what you're doing. Add that, and it would literally do a uh, a set gadget at R, or well, literally with GUI bits, it would it would put it in the creation set. Now the the interesting thing about that when you're creating objects is is it's a different objects allow for different things to happen. And you'll see that on all the documentation, well, hopefully, the, uh, uh, where it's like it'll say, for this property, you can have new, and you can have update, you know? And so it's like sometimes you can change a, pro a field dynamically, and sometimes you can't. Now, in, when you're, in order to make this happen, um, I'm able to change everything dynamically. And the way it's actually doing that is by keeping a possible list of everything, and then when you come to setting something that can't be set, the gadget doesn't know how to modify itself, it actually changes it in its, in its copy tags, creates a new instance of that in the background, and then swaps it out. So, it, and it happens in, in real time, you, you never even see it. So there's some things you can't change once you create the object, and since the GUI bits, or, or the, whole, the whole GUI builder here, is real, live reaction interface building. This isn't a mock-up of it. These are the real objects as you ask for them. So, you're, so I had to work around those limitations. You have to, to be able to dynamically change it, because it's a designer. You've got to be able to add that after you have it on the screen. And the only way to do that is to destroy it and recreate it. The, uh, so therefore, the side effect is that um, the uh, GUI bits interpretation can do things the gadgets can't uh, because it has that ability. Now most of the time it's not a concern because you're running the software and it's, it's creating everything as it goes. And if all the tags are already set, it's, they're all at new instance and you're fine. 
But of course, when it comes to supporting properties, it's, with some classes, it gets very, very involved. Uh, like anytime you have, and if I can show this here, anytime you have an object which can contain more stuff. So if you want to create, let's, let's use our little dummy window. You want to create a chooser, okay? As soon as I did that, it added a new option on here, add chooser item, because it has nodes. And so now I can take and say, well, chooser, I just get one, one new choice, but if I say, well, add another few items, well, now I've got all of these possible choices, right? Now to, to do that in interpretation means that the nodes have to be built uh, and, and the interpreter needs to know where they are. So if it's goes through and creates it, it knows that you created all those nodes and they have to be attached to this object. And that's the only way it can deal with tags that are like pointers to lists and stuff like that, dependent objects. It actually has to build the objects, the dependent objects first and know how to connect it. So, so and, and that, that would be the, the limitation on any new tag that you could try to add in for raw, with raw values, because there, there'd be no way for it to know how to, what that meant and how to build those those nodes and stuff ahead of time. I mean, it's less important the fact that you're actually spending every tag, <laughs> <laughs> which is, I'm impressed, because I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're in there. Yes, sir. Okay, maybe not a question. <laughs> maybe it's a quick answer. Um, how, architecturally, GUI Builder itself, just as a, just, just talking yeah. about it, separate from anything else. Mm -hmm. How how is it itself architected? Is it is the new one, arch, not the fourteen year old one. The the new one. Um, and the reason I'm asking this is that it's a it's somewhat loaded question which thinks what what would we be able to do if we were to have another um, GUI builder environment user interface uh, front ending the logic and all of the, the Amiga specific bits but in the cross platform way. So you've got a Visual right. Studio developer with their GUI pages and other things that they want to do, but of course, no way that the studio would ever be able to do any of this stuff. Exactly. The box. Yeah. There's no way they would have no knowledge. No one's .NET. It doesn't know any of this stuff. Right. So the, the question is, how how layered can this be? Can we remote it? Can we can we like? Yes. Yeah. There's a couple different ways you can approach that. So let's let's say you have Visual Studio. You wanted to use its design tools to yeah, create a yeah. basic interface. Yeah. You know it. It has no idea how to produce Poopsie or any clip, no, right? Yeah. But if you could take the output of that and translate it to the XML tag equivalent, that would be one way to patch it right from that way to that. The other one, which I don't know from another operating system would be a little tougher, but everything you see here, on all, or, or don't see it here, uh, <laughs> will have an AREX uh, interface backend. So it's all API. It's all, so you'll have a scriptable API to drive every feature of ABD itself. Uh, so if you want to manipulate the text editor and, and write text from an external script, you know anything is possible. Or simply do exactly what I'm doing, clicking on stuff, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to right. take and say, OK, GUI Builder, I want you to create a, a button here, now a, a vertical group. Now another object, now another object, another object. So it, it can be automated and it can be directed externally. Uh, and that is one of the one of the goals I've always had with, with GUI Builder because I um, I've always appreciated on the Amiga the ability for the separate software, completely different software, to be glued together by the user in entirely new ways. So you had classic stuff like a uh, deluxe paint and I could yeah. AREX, I could reach in and grab its buffer of a page and I could plug it into Ad Pro and scale it down or whatever and dig it out of here and put it back over there. I want the exact same thing with ABD. And I want you to be able to use any part of it you choose or all of it. So, you know, if you if you prefer um, a code bench uh, project management approach, you just want to do the interface design, you can take that and just you know, create 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 the interface, I'll put the code, and then bring it right back into CodeBench. And in fact, I'll probably be supporting a direct export of my project stuff in uh, Simon's project file uh, format. I've talked to him about it for years. Uh, Simon is actually one of the very, very first supporters of ABD. Because it was right at the point where it's like, oh, we really want an IDE, I really don't want to write it. <laughs> 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 so I prefer you did. 
And but unfortunately, I, I started with it, and then my career took me away from it for a good five years. And and fortunately, he picked up the slack. And today, we have you know Peter's work and Simon's work with the text editor, and now it's coming back into this, so that everybody can can use it, which I think is fantastic. Yes, sir. Would you? I don't know either in the old version or the new version. Would you be able to show us what you'd do? Be able to create a window. Just one button that said hello, yeah. export it to C code, yeah. make it print hello world in a window, and show us how you go through those steps doing it. Okay, well, this it's, it's a little, this is the really, really old, but I think it should do it. So, <laughs> uh, let's say, well, let's uh, um, take a brand new one. Uh, I think I need to, is, there was a crashing problem with the sub windows, so. I think if I quit the GUI builder altogether, yeah, okay, that's all right. And then I run it again. And now I want to create the Hello World example. Now what do you want to, you know, want to do? You have your choice. It's like, okay, uh, you want to do a string gadget? Just say, so, just say that, I mean, you'll make a window with a button that says Hello World, that the C code would then print the console Hello World. Oh, print, print to console. Let the, let, the, let the C code do the printing so we know that the button's running the, the C code. Okay, from this from this version, you could, you can see the result from the button running the code. Uh, okay. What, what, yeah, what you would see is not the, not the text of what you want to display, but rather the event that you hit the button. Yeah, because I'm just wondering what happens with everything you're doing. How does that get into the C code? Obviously, you're doing a program. You'd have a lot more code behind it than just yeah. running the whole world. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a ton of extra code actually. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. Well, no, I don't mean in your stuff. I mean in whatever. No, external. 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 Right. Yeah. And then, so how do you get from this to the C code? How do you link that yeah. event, the button up event, right. into the, the, the first thing you have to do is um, take and start with a selected template, right? So the application template. So I try to do this on here. I don't know if they're all there, but you might go up to uh, the project new C template project, and then select. Um, let's let's say uh, I, I don't know if it's in the test window. Let me check. Nope, nothing in a test window. So I want to I want to do that into here and uh, this new project name. So hello. This, this should be the project file. Oh, Paul. Paul. Oh, yeah. Paul. <laughs> okay. Uh, now this is a simple front end that I added yep. to the uh, uh, LHA Teach so Students Manual. Um, but I just did so. It's like okay. So I want to create a new C template for my target into this location and say okay, install the template. And there you go. Yeah. So it just unpacked it for you in the directory. That's all it did. Um, and we can see that. We can launch the. This is actually going to work with the text editor. Is that it, it, it knows all your projects, and then that's a quick project selector. And as you select the project, then you'll get your tree view of all your files, and you can just double click on it and, you know. You're right. And you know, we don't need this, we can also hide it away. Um, so if I open the file to where we unpacked it, test window, C source. <coughs> uh, oh, yeah, right, it was a drawer target. That's, that's, that's why I didn't like it. Because this actually should have been called Paul, and I don't know if I can uh, rename it. But the uh, with this, so here's your here's your source. So you're starting with a program that should already be able to compile and based run based on the template. Yeah, exactly. Which will actually give you a a, a a stock interface, and that interface. Oh, do you have? You must have. SDK and GCC and everything else going, right? Okay. So let's try it. Uh, <coughs> so 
So we go over here, open up shell, because I don't have the build commands on this, especially in this version, I don't have any of the build commands and everything, but you'll be able to do this all from the IDE, of course. Um, and let's see, where did we save it? Uh, on there, in US, oh, projects, okay. Right, so in the uh, test window, we have the, there we go. Uh, test window and into uh, C source. Eh. And rename. Because uh, we ended up with the echo program. So rename hello xml uh, all. And then it did the icon of course, so we rename uh, hello. It's been so long, I didn't know it was going to create. It was asking for a folder. I completely forgot. Um, I thought it was asking for the project name because all of that's pretty much automatic now. Um, hello, XML info to uh, small. I think I can't quite see it. All right. There we go. All right. So now we go into fall. Yeah. And from here, here's the, the standard. Um, top level layout is you, you have the project file in there, and then you've got Amigo S4, uh, and because this this structure is actually based on one I laid out for uh, uh, multiple operating system targets. So if you had a you wanted to build a, a Amigo S3 version, you'd have an Amigo S3 folder, and some of the stuff that's OS specific would be over there. So there's a separation of common code and OS specific code, which is why you're looking at this top level. Mm -hmm. So if we go into um, common, uh, there's our AVD template C dot H file, that's the best, the common root of it. And then underneath um, source, uh, we have a few top level, again, common arguments for uh, initializing the entire application, disposing the entire application, and editing the args, the whole thing. Because uh, it also support, uh, supports the um, uh, command line arguments and uh, help, uh, you know, as part of its standard set of stuff. So now we go into, um, let's take a look into the, the make itself. I'm sure we'll go, uh, go off one. And because it's Amigo S4, um, we should have a make. And there's our make file. Now, theoretically, I'm not sure which one this is, so let's try to build it. Oh, no, 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 of course, it's looking for my increment version uh, software. That's not a problem. Um, let's see. Um, and we'll just build target. Oh, yeah. Um, that's the that's the header file that holds all of the information on there. Let's take a look back. Um, I think I'm missing it. Oh, I shouldn't be missing it. Yeah, AV version H. So if we uh, AVD version H. Oh, I'm, I'm still in May. Can't that complete that? You're right, this is really tough without monitoring. I can't, uh, I can't really see this. Uh, I think we should do this later or something. <laughs> the, uh, uh, but, I mean, let me, let me just cut to the chase and say, let's, let's assume it built. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because it can, and, and there were no bugs. And there were no bugs. Yes. Let's just assume the world is perfect. <laughs> well, it's happening. Well, you knew you could do that, Steve. <laughs> uh, now we can take it. So we'll take a closer look at where, where it'll actually change. Uh, so we have. Uh, da, 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 da. So we, we're looking looking at AVD. Uh, in under the projects, and uh, 
test window, and we're going to we're put it to see source at call. And in the Amiga OS um, specific section, under source, um, and okay, so this is the next layer. So it's the top layer stuff calls this, and, and the real main entry point is OS main.c, is where actually everything starts. Uh, but underneath the hood here, we have uh, create GUI. And this, this is where you, see, you can see right here, um, hopefully, pretty broke for me. Uh, ADD start here, right? This is the top section where it's going to say, all right, all the stuff underneath here for generating a window, creating the gadgets, if you apply it back to the source, it's going to rewrite this. So that's one of the challenges uh, that ADD will handle eventually is not only the ability to take this and output it, the changes from a known design, but to allow you to modify that design and parse the C back again to pick up your changes. Now, if you're working always from the design, fix, putting everything into the interface and saving it out, you'll never have to worry about that. But if you saved it to a certain point and then you took it out and you started doing all kinds of manual hacks and stuff to the areas it will modify, I want to be able to <coughs> parse that and pick those changes up and know what you did. From the C, so C code back into the interface. From the manually modified C code back into the interface. Which is a little tough, but not impossible. Uh, because the, the whole, this whole editor will be constantly parsing your C source as you write. And it'll know how to follow it. So it'll know it picks up a header file, it knows the include paths. So as you write code, you can, it'll be able to suggest um, the target, you know, targets for what you just wrote as you write. And that's all part of the navigation system. So there's going to be a whole parsing library that knows every detail about how to navigate its way through C and C++. And so at that point, it will, it'll be pretty trivial to, to read the, the GUI stuff and, and redesign it, even if you wrote it with the macros or without the macros. Um, so, but that, that is one of the end, end goals. But of course, from a starting standpoint, if you have all of the tools and editing everything within the same interface, then it does all the tracking and you'll never have to worry about manually editing it because you can you can put all your changes and everything into each one of the sections through the interface, through creativity. So down here is the pre-written um, allocation of your the window. And I, I have my own handling system for the windows. Uh, for the um, uh, actually allocating your dependent objects, keeping track of all of that stuff. So this is, this is kind of one of the side effects of writing a single piece of source code that is dynamic enough to take a interface design you don't know what you're going to do yet. So it, it kind of categorizes things instead of, it's not just the straight um, direct layout of one great big uh, interface like here. This is part of it. And so the, so the default, we're looking at the default one. So it does have an interface. So it has something to build and it has something you can see it runs. And in here, uh, there it gives a, it's a window and it has a button, it's test button one, test button two, and click me to quit. And they've all, they're all created and of course it'll respond to these. It has a vent handler for them, the whole thing. So, to answer your question then, if you, you then take, let's hide that out of the way, and we create a very, very simple little thing. Um, and I'm not even going to be able to see. So for, forget the interface, I, I don't really need it on there. Because I don't want two windows. If, if, if I go the, the workaround, it'll generate two windows. And you'll end up with both of them, and I don't want that. And I can't kill the other window in this version because it crashes. <laughs> so I'll just work without this interface design. So you just have a button on here, and then we'll put like a, maybe a horizontal group underneath it, and another button and a space, and you know another button there. So like that. Now, I, I can't name them without doing the double window thing. So I'm just going to stick right there. 
And right from here, I haven't saved it. I just experiment, right? Yeah. But I can go up to my build and say generate C source two, and then go into test window C source all, and that should be the root of it right there. Okay, generate C source here. There you go. Uh, so we're going generate uh, generate C source to ABD template at this location. And I know I've got build and build and run uh, for it so you know that you can automatically have a compile it, but I know that's not going to work, so I'm just going to take it and say, okay, I'm done. And then go back to the, uh, well, I can do it to the, yeah, I can go back to the browser thing on here as well. That works. Projects. <laughs> made a backup. So this is uh, one of the files that's modified, uh, which is a header file supporting uh, the uh, the actual gadget creation, identifiers and everything will go in for all the handles. Mm -hmm. It modifies that. If we go into source functions, here you can see it modified allocate objects, create GUI, and process events. Create GUI, as we looked at before, um, had uh, two, three buttons in it that were click one, click two, and quit, right? That has now been replaced with one button called button, and child, another group, your horizontal group, there's your other button, your space, and your other button. So it literally knows exactly what the pre-written target template is and exactly how to modify it to add your changes into the code. Okay. You know? But you you wouldn't put the changes here. Manually? Yeah. It seemed like you didn't want to edit this area down below. Right, yeah. Well it's your it's your choice, right? right? Because you may decide I created the interface, I saved it out to the template, now I'm just gonna go on manually from here. As long as you never go back to the original interface and regenerate it won't be rewritten. Right, but I mean, you won't, it seems to me you almost always will go back and tweak something or add And if you want to use the interface, <laughs> yeah, so that if you're working completely within ABD, it's going to guide you through that. So when you say, I've got a button, I want to add an action to a button, write to the text editor, fill in here. With C code. With C code or script, uh, whatever you choose, and then it will know, it'll add those functions for you, and that, and so you'll have these areas where you know within the ABD that, that you definitely can edit and modify and extend and keep going and keep going, keep regenerating it. But as I said, uh, uh, eventually I want to be able to adapt to what the user has modified externally. So let's say you say, I don't know, I can't figure this out. Let me send this to my buddy. And he goes, that's like this, hack, 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 hack. And he sends it back again. You know, without having to understand what he did, you load it, import it back into ABD from the raw C source, and it recreates it. Right. Um, part of that leads to importing already pre-written software back into ABD as best you can. Um, that would be that would be tough. But all all of the source for the for the template is supporting structure for everything for everything else. So you can import in, say, like Newlib, and, and it will do the best it can and let you manage it as a project and edit it and everything. But it, it won't really be able to you know, work with an interface or, or regenerate an interface. Now, to that end, of course, now there will, there's, there's going to be a lot more than one template. One of the other templates uh, for different types of development, of course, is you're going to have the network uh, you know, interface, you know, framework for, for, for device drivers. There's going to be one for libraries, Boopsie class creation, you know, and basically everything that I can eventually, you know, figure out a template for and keep adding and stuff. Support for other from other users to, to add 
more stuff in for it, and even start plugging into uh, game APIs and game engines and stuff like that. So just keep growing that library of pre-written software. And you, can, and you can decide that, hey, I'm going to jump right in to create something very, very quickly. Five minutes, I want to be done. You pick a template, modify the interface, tell it to generate it. You can generate it either, again, as exporting it as to events, because now we can go back here and say, okay, well, cool, we, we, we generate the C source, we can compile the C source, and then we should have our program, which you would. Or we can take the exact same interface, go up here and say, I want to export this as GUI bits. Well, where do you want to put it? Well, I want to put it back into, and the new, the new version kind of guides you with this by default. Test window, GUI bits, and this is also the wrong extension. It doesn't need an extension. We just call this guy Paul. There you go. Now you've created that. Now I go back. It's out of the way. And we go back into test window and we go into GUI bits. And we have a couple of pieces of junk in there. And there we go. And there's Paul. Run it. There you are. There's your program. And if I put, if I rename those buttons, if I do the double window thing the trick and everything, and I rename those to put an underscore in there, it'll respond to the urgent keys, of course. And if in the different builds with this, you, what you would see is a console output telling you, hey, you, you click button object one, you click button object two, you click. And then you can then go into the, the process uh, events loop where you can see where everything kicks off. Now what it will end up generating for you is the process event loop should be able to be maintained completely by ABD because as you go to different actions, it's just going to go, oh, the button, here's a function, it just goes off and does that. So as the events happen, it handles the calls to the functions that you need it to do and you don't have to modify that. But of course, you could go right into the process event loop, right where it says, hey, I got the event, it's for this, this object, I'm going to fill in some bits here. Print F, hello world, da -da -da, and then just recompile it. Um, but, and again, I'm going to try to maintain that duality of development so that you can uh, create scripted, interpreted interfaces and with running programs and actions, and also uh, your C source stuff. There's a there's definitely a place I think for both um, both things to exist. In some cases, the, the scripting is just far easier. Uh, or and especially in different things where it's like, oh, I want to create a, I want to create a graphical interface front end for an existing command line tool, you know, like, you know, BNC or something like that. Speed engine. Speed engine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. I mean, I think this is. Uh, I'm forgetting anything. It's more or less what I wanted to take and uh, uh, talk about. Uh, for where we are, I, obviously I'm not able to show you a lot of the, the progress for where the GUI builder is really at. Uh, hopefully I will be able to do that before the end of the, the, uh, the show. Um, the other very big news for, for me, <laughs> especially, is that this project is not just back, it's fully funded. So Amiga on the Lake is fully funding the completion of this software. It will be available exclusively from them. Uh, there will be an early adopters uh, version that will come out uh, probably within uh, a month or two, maybe November, once I get a chance to get back and put enough of it together so that it's functional, so that people that are willing to kick it around and play with it, they'll be able to take and, and, and buy it at the early adopters price of $199, basically $200. After it runs 1.0 release, it'll be $300 for the commercial version. Uh, again, there'll still be the freeware version uh, limit, you know, for creating freeware software. And as an added bonus, uh, Amiga on the Lake has decided to purchase a full commercial license for every DevCon attendee today. Dude, wow. Dude thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So to that end, please make sure that you get me at least a name and email uh, or any 
you know, handle you want to show up in your registered version. For people that have been here with, with this project for a really long time and have already purchased, um, I will be adding the uh, actual full 2.0 update for free for existing owners. So we're early adopters. Well, yeah, just for early, early adopters. Early, well, basically, yes, because very, patient. very, very early very, adopters. Very, 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 <laughs> very, very early adopters. <laughs> the guys 14 years ago that said, that sounds like a good idea. Back in the subscription days. Yes, back in the subscription days. <laughs> and it wasn't an ongoing subscription, though. It was just a payment for it. 10 bucks a month until right. you got the toy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With donations could go on if you wanted to do that and stuff like that. So, yes. Um, so, we will be seeing updates on a regular basis. Um, anybody that you know is, is getting is getting a license today uh, will have all the updates through the 1.x right up to 2.0. When you hit 2.0, the typical upgrade license fee will be about 20% of the retail cost of the full cost. So I'm always, always, always going to give credit to anybody that even sent me 10 bucks <laughs> to say you you put some skin in the game to make this happen you're not going to ever pay full price on an upgrade, period. You know, so. Good plug. So, that's it for me. Uh, any questions? Sign me up. There you go. Fantastic. Oh, I, I forgot the bit. This is all part of your, it's time, it's ready to rock it's, initiative. Yes, it's, it's time to rock. Calling all developers. Calling all developers. I forgot that. <laughs> Where's the drummer? Um, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. Not about. Is that rock star guy? Yeah. What's his name? Um, is he here? Uh, Jimmy DeAnda. Is he here? Yeah. <laughs> is he going to play? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> but we'll see. So this is going to be, by the way, for those of you that are here, uh, I'm, I'm praying and wishing upon a star that Jamie fixes a couple things because I'm going to end my presentation on Saturday with with the highlight of, and actually it's funny. I'm going to I'm going to show like the hello world thing. Well, that's a simple thing, and I'm going to show all the code, all the code, and you know how long would it take someone, you know, just a developer to sit down and hand code all that stuff, including the menus and stuff. We'll just say, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. How would you like to trade 45 minutes for 15 seconds? And of course. I'm looking to, to end on that highlight, so that's where I'm going. So there's a little a little cool preview. Excellent. So I like two or three hours. So that's that's the surprise in a nutshell. It's a nice surprise. It's a great surprise. <laughs> yeah. And I was working very, 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 very hard to show you the, the real version. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, he fixed a bunch of stuff. He was here until uh, um, 3 30 a.m. last well, night. Uh, quarter to four is. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Had to get the extra 15 yeah. credits of an extra 15 oh, minutes. So you went to sleep when I got up. Yes. Nice. And got back up. Thank you. I gave myself an extra hour. I got back up at six instead of five. Wow. Because I, I knew a long shower would be in. Oh, that's how it works. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you very much, Steve. Um, that's, that's all I have for the formal part of the uh, dev con. Very nice. Yes. So, uh, again, please make sure that you get me your name and email yes. contact so that I, I definitely get you on the registration list. Uh, I don't know we've got, we have attendees for that. Uh, and I have my, I still have my register information, so as long as you Give me one of your old emails and or your handle. I should be able to find out if you've purchased before. Uh, <laughs> but some of that with the PayPal, it's uh, very limited information. Mm -hmm. so I have a lot of contacts in it. So if anybody knows anybody that you know has actually purchased the SDK browser individually or AVD, and you know they 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 don't you know their email has changed or whatever because I've I've got lots of bounced emails. I can't contact everybody. I don't know where they are. Anymore. <laughs> yep. uh, don't, don't forget, I gave you a free sticker. <laughs> okay. And I think that was a yeah. little surprise. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks kind of 
small. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's so precious to me. I'm actually going to leave it in the thing because if I put it on something, I'm going to be I like, know. I kind of want to have it over here, so I'm just going to leave it on the sticker and just look at that. From I, have, I have far more than just the one Amiga. I only have the one sticker. You want more? Yeah, yeah more. Sure. Yeah. For, for a nominal price, you have more. Yeah, it's way too much. <laughs> <laughs> I will take extras, absolutely. I got people like me some more too. Thank you, sir. Awesome. So there's some more there's more here so they really know. And we froze. Ah, be good going. <laughs> okay, well that uh, that that's all I have for now. Oh yeah, you yeah, please explore anything uh, I else. I, can we talk about their, their their name? Bugs, bugs, the bugs, in general, in yeah, private email, your group. Act, current active email. Well, actually, I've got, got a, a for sure. couple I wanted to make sure. They want to put where they're from yeah. or anything yeah. like that. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Steve. No yes. Yes. You, you, you still have access, so.